last time I was single, I was 24, and the dating pool was everyone. And now it's like a shallow puddle of age-appropriate men who are old and gross, and I don't want to do that. Yo, what is going on, guys? I hope you are all doing well. So on today's episode, we are going to be covering a video from Hadan talking about women over the age of 35 being unable to secure a man. So guys, before we jump into today's video, don't forget to go and subscribe to Hadan. I'm going to leave him pinned in the top comment. And as always, guys, don't forget to leave your thoughts and your comments. And let's just jump right into today's cringe. Trick that I do when family members just ask me if I'm single or what I'm doing in my life. Like, oh my God, you're 37. Like, aren't you worried? I just say, Oh my God, I'm dating a lot of people. I'm having so much fun. And then they get kind of weirded out that you're so happy and excited about it. And then you're like, yeah, your family is getting weirded out because it's a very weird thing for you to be doing at 37, dating a whole bunch of different men. You know, guys, I saw a clip earlier today where in China, okay, if you're a girl and you're like 28, 30, and you still don't have a boyfriend, you still don't have a husband, whatever, you're considered a leftover woman. This girl is pushing 40 and still hasn't managed to find her Prince Charming. That is why your family is looking at you weirdly. It's not because they don't want to see you happy. It's uh, unironically, it's actually the opposite. It's because they would rather see you happy, yet here you are goofing around with random men from Tinder. Like, yeah, and I'm really enjoying work and like things are just going great. Being happy about your life makes it harder for someone to bring you down, at least in person. As opposed to, oh, Aunt Susie, yeah, I'm dating, you know, haven't found the one. Gonna grill you, give you advice you don't want. But happy things, she'll ask you about happy things. Yeah, so basically just lie to them, you know? <laughs> Notice how she said that relatives asking why she's single are trying to bring her down. They're not trying to be mean or bring you down. They're just curious or worried. The reason you add bad connotations to those questions is because you yourself know that it's bad to be single at 37. You know it's not how it should be. You know the biological clock is ticking. You're worried that you might not find someone anytime. And those things weigh on your consciousness and you feel exposed when someone asks about it. Don't tell me you're innocent. Because it insults my intelligence. And so she hides from reality by saying, Oh my, I'm dating so many people, it's so funny, and work is going so great, and everything is going so well. Like, can you picture her at 45? Oh, I just love my 9 to 5 in the office, it makes me feel so productive. And my 7 cats at home, ah, oh, they're so funny. And my boxed wine is just so delicious. Everything is perfect. Hey, so you're ready for our kind of different than your profile pictures? Yeah, they're a couple months old. Yeah, mine are old too, so I, I get it. But anyway, so I mean, those are nice jeans. What kind are they? Feel a little spin. Let me check them out. Okie dokie. He's going to be gone. Yeah. <laughs> hey, where'd you go? So it happened again. I had a date cancel on me and we were supposed to go out for dinner tonight as a single mom. So it's a few hours before the dinner. I get a Instagram message that he's not going to be able to make it. He has to bail. This was a guy from my DMs and he's out of town. He said he was coming into town, wanted to take me out for dinner. I said sure, cleared my schedule, made sure that I used one of my one of my four free nights a month to meet this guy. And the I'm just going to let you guys know here. This is why I don't this is one of the many reasons why I don't feel sympathy for these women, okay? is I want you to notice how she'll clear her schedule for this man. And she kind of wants us to feel sorry for her in this situation. She's like, you know, I cleared my schedule. I did my things. I got ready for the date. And then somehow he managed to ghost. Women like this, she's not a bad looking woman, guys. Even, you know, she's a single mother. 
despite this, there are plenty of men who would be willing to date her, plenty of dudes who would, you know, take her out to dinner, whatever, but she chooses the men who clearly, like, they're out of state, okay, they probably don't want to deal with her, and then she's like, man, I used up my one free night that I have in X amount of days. It's like, yeah, the guy who is out of your league, good chance he'll probably just flake on you. And if you're a single mother, there are more and more men who are out of your league. And the reason why is because a lot of guys are not looking to date a woman who has a child. The funny thing is, is that I knew this was going to happen. I had a feeling a few days ago and told a few friends that this guy was going to stand me up. So I guess at least he had the decency to uh, send me a message and let me know that he wasn't going to make it. This, this is, I'm pretty sure I've covered this woman before, guys. This is exactly what I'm talking about. She knew, the reason why she knew the dude was going to flake on her is probably because the dude was out of her league in the first place. This has happened on multiple different occasions, okay? And this is how you know, like, these girls, they're not selecting dudes who necessarily are interested in commitment. Like, again, these are girls who will complain about dating applications, okay? Saying things like, why can't I find a man? But literally, like, <laughs> these dudes are just using these applications to hook up with these women. Especially as a single mother, a lot of men are not going to look at you. Any dude who has self-respect is probably not going to be looking at you as a relationship prospect. I just don't get it. I don't understand. I don't think this guy had actually any intentions of coming to my city. I think it was all bullshit, and I was just picking up on this really hardcore, but... He probably did come to your city. He just probably you know, found a different girl instead who wasn't as... He actually... Pro what probably happened, right, is you probably matched with him, you guys talked or whatever, right? And then he never read your, like, Instagram bio, and then he decided to read it, and it said mother to, like, you know, Chester or some crap in the bio, right? It said mother to X. And then he's like, oh, it's a single mother. I'm gonna, you know, there's another girl who's going to be better. I can't even get a date. I literally cannot even get one date get people to meet me. I don't understand what it is. I'm not on the dating apps, I'm trying to meet people in real life. Thought maybe I would try my DMs to see if that was an option, like my own personal dating app for all my social media. That's not working. Said this before as well, guys, but girls will try and gaslight you into thinking that their social media accounts like Instagram aren't dating applications. I, I told you guys many times before, this is something that isn't available to most men because for men, you have to have like a good amount of status or, you know, you know, you're like a really jacked physique, a good amount of followers, etc. But women can use these applications a lot easier than men straight up as just dating websites. Like Instagram is the biggest dating application. I don't care how many people are out here saying, oh, well, ins I just use Instagram to communicate. It's a dating application. Okay, I'm so sick of, like, women gaslighting their, their boyfriends and stuff and, oh, you know, I just need Snapchat to keep in contact with people. Why does your wife, why does your girlfriend have Snapchat? Can you guys imagine back in the day if your mothers had Snapchat and were just keeping in touch with random dudes? Get out of here, bro. What is it? Like, what am I not getting? What am I doing wrong? What am I not seeing? You're a single mother. So, in my opinion, this woman has some green flags. You know, she's trying to date in real life or with people she already knows. She's not just meeting up with strangers on dating apps where most people just want to smash. She's not meeting men at clubs. She speaks in a good tone. She doesn't proclaim to be a bad bee. Well, maybe we've come to a point in society where not having a horrendous attitude is a green flag, but I don't know, guys. Maybe I just woke up too optimistic today, but you can clearly see the difference between this woman and the first one we covered. The first one, you couldn't even date because her entitlement would leave no place in the room. But this woman seems like a good catch, right? She's attractive, her life seems in order, she puts more attention to her child than to dating apps as it should be. So let's give her all the benefits of the doubt. Let's presume she got divorced for natural reasons. The reason why you're not meeting a good guy is probably due to too high standards or some hidden red flags. Because here's the thing, guys, I know many people who have formed families at 30, at 40, even at 50. So for example, a divorced 30-year-old woman gets with a divorced 30-year-old man, a single 40-year-old woman gets with a single 40-year-old man, 
people at 50 who already have kids maybe meet other people at 50 who have kids as well and the reason for those relationships to work is quality people this is something that i've mentioned in previous videos feel free to disagree in the comments below but even at age 30 or 40 even as a single mother if you are a good catch men will eventually be interested in you of course <clears throat> excuse me guys trying to find a life partner is best at 20 but even at 30 if you know how to be a good wife you will most definitely find a man there are a lot of men out there who are in their 30s and have been divorced or have been single because they have been grinding and they will be ready to form a family with a good woman i mean american men are literally thirsty for marriage material women who won't cheat on them leave them or be a burden so if you are not able to get a serious relationship either you have too high standards you know you are 30 plus and have a kid you can't expect wealthy successful men in their late 20s to be super enthusiastic about being with you because they have their options right or you are just not wifey material, honestly. But what do you guys think? This is why I like Hadan's content as well, guys. You'll notice he's a little bit less cynical than myself, okay? The reason why, I agree with Hadan, the reason why that she's single is because, number one, her standards are there, and they're too high, and number two, she's a single mother, and a lot of men are not going to want to date her. But I really like Hadan's content for this reason, guys. He likes to give people the benefit of the doubt, you know, and suggest that, hey, all things considered, are they actually a good person or not? Are they trying to be? And, you know, credit to this woman, okay? She says she's not using dating applications. She's trying to use people. She's trying to, excuse me, meet people in real life. But at the end of the day, she is a single mother, okay? And she is a girl who is leveraging Instagram for dating and stuff like this. But, uh, you know, let us know what you guys think in the comments. Personally, I think the reason why she's single and she can't get a man is because most of the men that she wants... Um, don't want to date a single mother. But let's continue on to the next clip. Chat. Don't mind me, I'm just making lunch. I was intentionally single for, I would say, probably five years after getting out of an abusive and toxic relationship. Intentionally single for five years, guys, basically means she's gone around and has had a lot of casual bedroom fun with random men, and now she's ready to settle down. Let's take a listen. When women say they are single, there is a 99% chance they're not really single, but messing around. But exactly. hey, I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt because I'm feeling optimistic today. And once I moved to New York City, I decided that I really wanted to start intentionally dating because I do want a long-term partnership. And... Kind of have to get yourself out there if that's something that you want. So what did I say, guys? Right? Five years of screwing around with bad boys, not getting into anything serious, but now she wants you to come along and have a serious relationship with her. So, I've been intentionally dating for the last eight months while living in New York City, and I'm not a dating expert, but I do have some good tips. Literally all about your mindset and perspective. Let me explain. I know everybody has different intentions for dating. For myself personally, I'm looking for one person that I want to spend the rest of my life with. One person. And let's take me for example, again, I live in New York City where there are 8 million people in New York City alone. That's a lot of people. That's one person I'm looking for out of 8 million. And I do think it's possible to find your person or find someone that you want to choose to spend the rest of your life with. But think about it in terms of a game. And I think it will make a little bit more sense and it will help you feel a little less like bogged down when you go on a date that's not great. The odds of finding, again for myself, one out of eight million, I'm gonna have to roll the dice, right? I'm gonna have to play the game many, many times before I finally find a match. It's a numbers game. I don't think it's a game game, but it's definitely a numbers game. The more you put yourself out there, the more you roll the dice, the better chances or the better odds you have of meeting someone that you're going to really click with. So I love how we have to use all of this fluffy language of like, yeah, we're rolling the dice or, you know, we're just, we're just casual, you know, we're dating. Like she'll use fluffy language, but what it really means is I'm going to go out with a whole bunch of random dudes and get with them, a lot of them, presumably. And then in the end, I'm going to look for a serious relationship and settle down once I know what I want. Guys, this is why it's so important to have father figures in the household, because father figures, when they're growing up and they have things like daughters and, and things like this, you know, 
if you leave a lot of these girls to their own devices to select their partners, they're going to choose guys who are never going to commit to them, who aren't interested, etc. But trust me, guys, take it back, you know, way back in time when fathers were the ones selecting the, uh, you know, the partners for their daughters and stuff like that. You never hear these crazy stories. Okay, it's weird to me how girls will, a lot of them will try and pull this card of like, oh, I didn't know he was terrible. I didn't know this. I didn't know that. Why can't I just find the one? But if you were to take a father who cares about his daughter, oh, he'll find you the one. You know, it'll take two seconds. <laughs> and guess what? That guy probably won't cheat on you. He probably won't do, you know, all these terrible things you complain about and talk about and say, these are the reasons why you can't find a man. Okay, but she's not attracted to that guy. She wants the bad boy. She wants the dude who significantly out earns her, who goes to the gym religiously and all of these sorts of things. So when you go on a first date, that's not great. Remind yourself that you rolled the dice and you're one step closer to meeting someone that you do align with and you do click with. I know it can be frustrating and I know it can be hard, but that is why I treat myself to a little sense of something after every first date that just doesn't turn out to be great because it's positive reinforcement that keeps me in the game. I tell you guys, girls like this do not even understand how privileged they are in dating. This girl's talking about how, oh, I'm going to go on this date and I'm going to go on that date and I'm going to keep rolling the dice until I find the man that I want and it's really, really hard on me, so I'm going to reward myself. Yet most men can't even get a date. Like, or they'll go out on a date with a girl and she'll be awful. Okay, like, you know, once in a blue moon, he might get some attention from women. There are a lot of men out there who struggle to find dates. In fact, most men, I would argue, struggle to find dates. And this is a girl who's saying how it's somehow, it's hard on her, life is so difficult when she has this whole buffet of men to choose from. But you know, each one just uh, isn't her preference or doesn't want to commit to her. It's, it's, it's like a millionaire, guys, complaining about how apples cost a bit more, you know? I mean, credit where credit is due, at least she's looking for something serious and long-lasting. The reason this approach is dumb, however, is that you see love as a roulette, where if you spin the wheel 8 million times, you eventually get the prize. Let me give you an example of why this doesn't work. If you just finished college and you apply to 100 different jobs which pay $20,000 a month, on how many of them will you get accepted, do you think? The answer is zero, and the reason why is because you are forgetting about quality. You won't get a high-earning job straight out of college because you lack experience, you are not a worker deserving of such a high uh, paycheck because you, you lack the experience and, the, and a built-up skill set, meaning your quality of work is not worth $20,000. In the same way, you won't magically land on Prince Charming after spinning the wheel multiple times. If you are a quality woman, a good woman, you really won't see this as a numbers game because if you lack the ability to keep a man you can spin the wheel endlessly, but you won't find the perfect man. Getting a good man is really about just being a good woman. It's not dependent on luck. Uh, there is no way to cheat or get around it. If women just work on being good dating material, men will approach them naturally. And lastly, I really don't think love and serious relationships are a numbers game. When you find a partner that you like, you don't ask yourself, is this the best option I have between the 8 million in my city? Is this really the best person for me out of the 8 billion in the world? And this is why I personally don't trust dating apps to find true love. Because you can't really choose who you are going to love based off of some characteristics and stats you saw about him. But love is something subjective for the most part, so leave me your thoughts about how it works in your opinion in the comments, guys. And thank you for watching. Uh, leave me your thoughts in the comments, I really enjoy uh, looking at them. And the red flag counter is already on the way. So yeah, I'll see you next time. Guys, that is the end of today's video. If you guys have any comments that you would like to leave in relation to any of the TikToks that we have covered here today, feel free to do so. That is what the comments box is for. Don't forget to go and subscribe to Hadan for the work of putting together today's episode for us to cringe to. And we're going to be leaving it there, guys. Make sure that you take care of yourselves and I'll be seeing you all in the next episode. Peace.